the session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Ralph Recto, the President pro tempore, will lead the chamber in prayer. Thank you, Mr. President. Lord, we come together today imploring your guidance and strength as we continue to seek solutions to the COVID-19 pandemic as it impacts on our health, the economy, and our way of life. We pray that God remain by the side of the victims and their families, that they may find solace in his love and mercy. May the sick regain their strength and glorify God's goodness and omnipotence. Dear God, we thank you for guiding our researchers and scientists who have worked hard so that vaccines for the COVID-19 have finally been developed and will soon restore our countrymen to wellness and a better and secured life. While the availability of vaccines is most welcome by many as it certainly lays the groundwork for recovery and sustained growth, we realize that many others remain fearful of the efficacy and side effects of the vaccines. Hence, Lord, we pray that a more enlightening information campaign on the vaccines is adopted to educate the people in order to assuage their fears and confusion. Please grant us the serenity to have faith in your protection and to trust those whom you have given the responsibility to find the most effective response to the crisis. Grant our leaders the wisdom in their management of the vaccination program, particularly in the procurement of the vaccines, as well as in the storage, distribution, and actual inoculation. God of wisdom, this chamber is in a crucial moment as it tackles important legislation, not only to heal our country, but also on bills that will be meaningful to the day-to-day -day lives of our people. Lord, we are reminded that in all these legislative measures, the well-being of our people should be the paramount purpose of our hard work. We must realize that our efforts will redound to more meaningful services that will heal our people, energize business, preserve and create jobs, deliver social amelioration, and provide investments for the future. May this crisis unite us in prayer and in action, inspired by the abiding love of God and in the spirit of solidarity and goodwill, let us take care and support one another. Lord God, grant this chamber with wisdom and charity that we may work together to pass the necessary measures to alleviate the plight of our people, appease their fears and frustrations, and give them hope and comfort. Amen. Amen. Secretary, will please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senators Angara. Present. Dinay. Present. Cayetano. Present. De Lima. De La Rosa. Drilon. Present. Cachalian. Gordon. Present for Present. Ontiveros. Laxon. Lapid. Present. Marcos. Present. Pacquiao. Pangilinan. Present. Pimentel the third. Present. Po. Present. Recto. Present. Revilla Jr. Present. Tolentino. Villanueva. Villar. Present. Jubiri. Senate President Sodo III is present. With eight senators physically present and 14 senators virtually present, a total of 22, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. To the leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 38th session Monday and consider the same, that is on January 25, 2021, and consider the same as approved. Any so, objection? Chair hears none. Motion's approved. Mr. President, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. Secretary will proceed with the reference of business. Okay, good. 
Preference of Business Bills on First Reading, Senate Number 2017, Anak Renaming Metro Manila Film Festival, MMFF, to Philippine Film Festival, introduced by Senator Pacquiao. To the Committee on Public Information. Senate Number 2018, Anak Revising and Strengthening the Definition of the Crime of Rape, amending for the purpose Article 266-A and 266-D, and repealing Act 266 Article 266 3 of Act Number 3815, otherwise known as the Revised Penal Code as amended and for other purposes introduced by Senator Poe. To the Committee on Justice. Senate Number 2019, an act amending Section 13, Article 16 of Republic Act 11054, entitled An Act Providing for the Organic Law for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, repealing for the purpose Republic Act Number 6734, entitled An Act Providing for the Organic Law of the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, as amended by Republic Act 9054, entitled An Act to Strengthen and Expand the Organic Act for the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, and setting for the purpose the first regular election of the Bangsamoro Government. Government introduced by Senator Pimentel III. To the Committee on Local Government. Resolutions. PS Resolution Number 622, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Games and Amusement to conduct an investigation in aid of legislation on the propriety of engaging or allowing authorized agent corporations of the Philippine Charity. The Sweepstakes Office PCSO to continue selling, distributing, promoting, and marketing small town lottery STL despite the absence of business permits or opposition of local government units with the end in view of providing remedial legislation that will clarify the authority of local government units on PCSO's STL operations introduced by Senator Laxon. Referred to the Committee on Games and Amusement. P.S. Resolution Number 623, Resolution Calling for the Senate of the Philippines to Exercise Its Constituent Powers Under the 1987 Constitution to Propose Amendments to or Revision of the Constitution and upon approval of three-fourths vote of its members adopt the same, introduced by Senator Laxon. The Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Communications, letter from the Office of the President of the Philippines, transmitting to the Senate two original copies of Republic Act Number 11502, which was signed by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, entitled An Act Declaring the Month of October of Every Year as the National Cooperative Month. To the archives. Letter from the Executive Secretary of the Office of the President, respectfully transmitting to the Senate the fourth report of the President to the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee and the Commission on Audit, pursuant to Section 14 of Republic Act Number 11494, otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act. The Committee of Finance. There is additional reference of business. Additional reference of business, messages from the House of Representatives, letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 20 January 2021, it passed the following House bills in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. House number 8111, an act converting the Bulacan Agricultural State College in the municipality of San Ildefonso province of Bulacan into a state university to be known as the Bulacan State Agricultural University and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Higher Education, Ways and Means, and Finance. House number 8131, an act recognizing the Cabiao campus of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, PUP, located in the municipality of Cabiao, province of Nueva Ecija, as a regular campus of the PUP system and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Higher Education and Finance. House number 8188, an act converting the Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College in the municipality of Santa Maria, province of Ilocos Sur, and all its campuses in the province of Ilocos Sur into a state university, integrating therewith the North Luzon Philippine State College in the city of Candon, province of Ilocos Sur, to be known as the Ilocos Sur Philippines Polytechnic University in appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Higher Education, Ways and Means, and Finance. House number 7952, an act establishing a multi-specialty hospital in the city of Tayabas, province of Quezon, to be known as Southern Luzon Multi-Specialty Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Health and Finance. House number 8189, an act converting the Santo Tomas Infirmary Hospital in the municipality of Santo Tomas, province of Pampanga, into an annex of the Jose B. Lingad Memorial General Hospital to be known as Jose B. Lingad Memorial General Hospital, Santo Tomas Annex and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Health and Finance. House number 8190, an act increasing the bed capacity of Ilocos Sur District Hospital, Masingal, in the municipality of Masingal, province of Ilocos Sur, from 25 beds to 100 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. 
to the committees on health and finance. House number 8191, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Mangatarem District Hospital, the Municipality of Mangatarem, Province of Pangasinan, from 25 to 50 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8192, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Congressman Natalio P. Castillo Sr. Memorial Hospital in the Municipality of Luon, Province of Bohol, from 25 to 100 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8193, an act upgrading the Novaliches District Hospital in Barangay Bartolome, Quezon City into a level 2 hospital and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8194, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Rojas District Hospital in the Municipality of Rojas Province of Oriental Mindoro from 50 to 100 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8195, an act establishing in the municipality of Kadbayog, province of Samar, a tertiary hospital to be known as the Samar Island Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8196, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Samar Provincial Hospital in the city of Katbalogan, province of Samar, from 100 to 220 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8197, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Dr. Serapio B. Montanier Jr. Memorial Hospital in the municipality of Malabang, province of Lanao del Sur, and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8225, an act increasing the bed capacity of Dr. Paulino J. Garcia Memorial Research and Medical Center in the city of Cabanatuan, province of Nueva Ecija, from 400 to 1,000 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8226, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Martin Marasigan Memorial Hospital in the municipality of Cuenca, province of Batangas, from 25 to 80 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8227, an act establishing a tertiary general hospital in the municipality of Abulog, province of Cagayan Valley, to be known as the Northwestern Cagayan General Hospital and appropriating funds, therefore. To the committees on health and finance. House number 8228, an act converting the Bicol Regional Training and Teaching Hospital in the municipality of Daraga, province of Albay, into a general and subspecialty hospital to be known as the Bicol Regional Hospital and Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Health and Finance. House number 8254, an act establishing in the city of Panabo, province of Dabao del Norte, a district hospital to be known as the Panabo City District Hospital and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Health and Finance. House number 8260, an act converting the Quezon Medical Center in the city of Lucena, province of Quezon, into a tertiary level hospital and regional training center and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Health and Finance. House number 8270, an act establishing in the city of Candon, province of Ilocos Sur, a tertiary hospital to be known as the Ilocos Sur Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Health and Finance. House number 5453, an act establishing a district branch of the Land Transportation Office, LTO, in the municipality of Katayingan in the 3rd District of Masbate and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 6152, an act establishing a satellite office of the Land Transportation Office, LTO, in the municipality of Pinamalayan, Oriental Mindoro, and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 6169, an act converting the Gimbal Iloilo Extension Office of the Land Transportation Office, LTO, into a regular, regular LTO Class D district office to be located in the municipality of Gimbal, province of Iloilo. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 6440, an act converting the Molave Extension Office of the Land Transportation Office, LTO, located in the municipality of Molave, province of Zamboanga del Sur, into a regular, regular LTO district office and appropriating funds. Therefore, to the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 6664, an act creating a regular LTO district office in the municipality of Ibahay, province of Aklan, to be known as the Western Aklan LTO Center and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 8130, an act converting the Land Transportation Office LTO Extension Office in the city of Pasi, province of Iloilo, into a regular LTO district office and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 8236, an act establishing a regular district office of the Land Transportation Office LTO in the municipality of Calamba, province of Misamis Occidental, and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 8132, an act converting the Sisigon Elementary School in Barangay Sisigon, Municipality of Matnog, province of Sorsogon, into an integrated school to be known as Sisigon Integrated School and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Basic Education and Finance. House number 8133, an act establishing the Edades and Bernal Cultural Center and Museum in Dagupan City, province of Pangasinan, and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Basic Education and Finance. House number 8237, an act converting the Siocon National 
International High School in Barangay Poblacion, Municipality of Shokon, Province of Zamboanga del Norte, International Science High School to be known as Shokon National High School and appropriating funds therefore. The Committee is on Basic Education and Finance. House Number 8238, an act establishing a national high school in Barangay Marcos, Municipality of Santa, Province of Ilocos Sur, to be known as Santa National High School and appropriating funds therefore. To the Committee is on Basic Education and Finance. House Number 8239, an act separating the Santo Rosario Elementary School, Santos Encarnacion Elementary School Extension in Barangay Dalandanan, Valenzuela City, Metro Manila, from the Santo Rosario Elementary School, converting it into an independent elementary school to be known as Santos Encarnacion Elementary School and appropriating funds therefore. The Committee on Basic Education and Finance. House Number 8240, an act separating the Malinta Elementary School, Pinalagad Annex, in Sicho Pinalagad, Barangay Malinta, Valenzuela City, Metro Manila, from the Malinta Elementary School, converting it into an independent elementary school to be known as the Pinalagad Elementary School and appropriating funds, therefore. The Committee on Basic Education and Finance. House Number 8255, an act establishing in the Municipality of Diplahan, Province of Zamboanga, Zibugay, a separate schools division office for the 1st District of Zamboanga, Zibugay, and appropriating funds, therefore. Committees on Basic Education and Finance. House Number 8118, an act reclassifying as agricultural land, a parcel of land of the public domain located in the Municipality of Dinalupihan and Hermosa, Province of Bataan, open to disposition for agricultural, commercial, residential, industrial, and other purposes. To the Committee on Environment. House Number 8139, an act declaring the passing islet located in Barangay Bato, Municipality of Santa Cruz, Province of Dabao del Sur, an ecotourism site and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism and uh, Environment and Finance. House Number 8146, an act declaring the Province of Lanao del Norte a tourism development area, creating the Lanao del Norte Tourism Council and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Tourism, Environment and Finance. House Number 8200, an act declaring Mat Mount Kitumnan, located in Barangay Tungod, in the Municipality of Langawe, Province of Ifugao, an ecotourism destination and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism, Environment and Finance. House Number 8204, an act declaring Barangay Balutakay in the Municipality of Bansalan, Province of Dabao del Sur, an ecotourism site and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism, Environment and Finance. House Number 8205, an act declaring the Province of Palawan a priority cruise ship destination in the Mimaropa region and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism and Finance. House Number 8206, an act declaring the Salgaran Art Cave in the Municipality of Quezon, Province of Palawan, an ecotourism destination providing for its development and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism, Environment and Finance. House Number 8208, an act declaring Masungi Geo Reserve in the Municipality of Baras, Province of Rizal, an ecotourism destination and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism, Environment and Finance. House Number 8209, an act declaring Barangay Kapatagan in the city of Digos, Province of Dabao del Sur, an ecotourism site and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism, Environment and Finance. House Number 8199, an act declaring the immediate environs of the Parroquia de Nuestra Señora de Candelaria, located in the Municipality of Paracale, Province of Camarines Norte, a tourist destination providing for its development and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Tourism and Finance. House Number 8147, an act renaming the Bogo Curva Medellin Daan Bantayan Maya Road, stretching from Barangay Don Pedro Rodriguez in the city of Bogo, traversing through Barangays Dayhagon, Don Virgilio Gonzalez. Canhabaga, Tindo, Curva, Caputa, Caputatan Sur, Caputatan Norte, Poblacion, Daan Lungsod, Antipolo, Mahawak, and Kawit in the Municipality of Medellin, Barangays Bakhawan, Paypay, Bitoon, Poblacion, Aguho, Tapilon, up to Maya in the Municipality of Daan Bantayan, all in the province of Cebu as Juan Macaraeg Highway. To the Committee of Public Works. House Number 8148, an act renaming the Lobog Bridge, traversing Barangay Panal. Salan in the Municipality of Claridel, Province of Misamis Occidental, as Alfonso Burlat Aduhan Bridge. To the Committee of Public Works. House Number 8221, an act naming the first Cebu Mactan Bridge traversing the Mactan Channel, located at AC Cortez Avenue in Barangay Look, Mandawi City, up to Mandawi Mactan Road in Barangay Paho, Lapu Lapu City, both in the province of Cebu as Serhing Veloso Osmeña Jr. Bridge. To the Committee of Public Works. House Number 8224, an act renaming the Marawi City Kapai 
Tagulaon 2, Lanao del Sur Road, stretching from Barangay Bangolo, Poblacion, in the city of Marawi, and traversing through the municipalities of Kapai, Tagulaon 2, all in the province of Lanao del Sur, as Senator Ahmad Dumacao Alangadi Alonto Sr. National Road. The Committee of Public Works. House number 8162, declare, an act declaring February 21 of every year a special non-working holiday in the municipality of Clarin, province of Misamis Occidental, to be known as Clarin Day in commemoration of its foundation anniversary. So the Committee on Local Government. House number 8163, an act declaring December 28 of every year a special non-working holiday in the municipality of Tudela, province of Misamis Occidental, to be known as Tudela Day in commemoration of its foundation anniversary. To the Committee on Local Government. House number 8178, an act establishing a coastal aquaculture center to support and rehabilitate the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Northern Mindanao Brackish Water Aquaculture Fish Farm in the municipality of Lala, province of Lanao del Norte, and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Agriculture and Finance. House number 94, entitled An Act Converting the Satellite Office of the Maritime Industry Authority located in Calbayog City, province of Samar, into an extension office and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. House number 4700, an act creating an extension office of the Maritime Industry Authority in Vigan City, Ilocos Sur, and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. And House number 6066, an act converting the satellite office of the Maritime Industry Authority located in Maasin City, province of Southern Leyte, into an extension office and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committees on Public Services and Finance. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 20 January 2021, it ratified the Conference Committee report Report and the disagreeing provisions of House Number 7904, entitled An Act Further Strengthening the Anti Money Laundering Law, amending for the purpose of Public Act Number 9160, otherwise known as the Anti Money Laundering Act of 2001, as amended, and Senate Number 1945, entitled An Act to Further Strengthen the Anti Money Laundering Law, amending for the purpose Sections 3, 7, 8 8, 10, 12, and 14 of Republic Act Number 9160, otherwise known as the Anti Money Laundering Law of 2001, as amended, and for other purposes. To the archives. There is a second additional reference. Second additional reference of business committee report. Committee report number 163 submitted jointly by the committees on agriculture, food and agrarian reform and local government on Senate number 1741 introduced by Senator Villar entitled An Act Declaring the City Davao as the Cacao and Chocolate Capital of the Philippines recommending its approval with amendments sponsor Senator Villar. They probably mean City of Davao. No? Anyway, to the calendar for ordinary business. Must be a typo, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, distinguished colleague of ours would like to um, utilize the privilege hour. We recognize our distinguished colleague from the great province of Cavite, Senator Francis Tol Tolentino, Mr. President. Senator Francis Tolentino is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. To our uh, esteemed colleagues, Mr. President, last Wednesday, last week, I wholeheartedly engaged in an interpolation by way of interjection, our colleague from Sambales, relative to a bill under consideration, which will be tackled today. And I I interjected points on maritime law, admiralty jurisdiction, Mr. President. That was last Wednesday. Two days thereafter, Mr. President, two days after we adjourned, it came to the attention of this representation. And my wish, Mr. President, is that I will not be interpolated today for the first time because of my sincere belief that the answer to the questions will not emanate from me, that the answers to the questions, to the questions which I will pose is lodged constitutionally in a separate office commanded by the Constitution and tasked to resolve the issues that I will now raise, Mr. President. Last Friday, the National People's Congress of the People's Republic of China passed a law 
the Coast Guard law of the People's Republic of China. The law, for the first time, Mr. President, explicitly allows its Coast Guard to fire on foreign vessels, fishing boats, fishing boats, Coast Guard boats, naval boats, or any peace-seeking NGO boats, Mr. President. And the law, Mr. President, will take effect February 1, six days from now. I'm saying this, Mr. President, because a lot of our fishermen are out there. Some of our fishermen from Zambales, from Mindoro, from Palawan, from Batangas, from Cavite, will also go out, Mr. President, not knowing of the existence of this newly passed law by the People's Congress of China, allowing its Coast Guard to take, and I quote, all necessary measures, including the use of weapons, when national sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction are being illegally infringed upon by foreign organizations or individuals at sea, Mr. President. And the law was very specific, Mr. President. It specified the circumstances under which the different kinds of weapons and held, I'm referring to pistols or rifles, shipborne, I'm referring to uh, shipborne missiles, for instance, Mr. President, or airborne coming from planes can be used. Number two, the law as passed allows or allows allowed the Coast Guard, the Chinese Coast Guard personnel to demolish other country structures built on Chinese claim reefs and to board and inspect vessels in waters claimed by China. Again, Mr. President, I worry for our fishermen coming from Zambales, Cavite, Batangas, Mindoro, and the rest of the eastern seaboard who will venture out into that coast, Mr. President. The law further provides, Mr. President, that the Chinese Coast Guard is now empowered to create temporary exclusion zones. These are lockdown zones as needed to stop other vessels and personnel from entering. Now, Mr. President, what are the ramifications? I have no answers, Mr. President. That's why I do not wish to be interpolated I just want to bring this to the attention of this August body because my answers, my cures probably will be worse than the disease, Mr. President. Nakakalungkot po ito, Mr. President. Nakakatakot. With how I wish, as that favorite, as one of my favorite TV shows was entitled before, Wish Kulang. How I wish, Mr. President, that we were back during the pre-COVID days. Nakakalabas lahat. Walang maskara, walang face shield, walang kinakatakutang, walang bakuna, walang droplets. How I wish we were that in we were, we were in that situation, Mr. President. Pre-COVID days, December of 2019, I think, Mr. President. Or how I wish again, Mr. President, in the international scene, we were on the pre-9 dash line days, Mr. President. Lahat nakakapangisda. Lahat na kapalaot, walang kinakatakutan, walang pinangambahan, walang gigibain, walang aharangin, walang kakatakutan. What will be the solutions, Mr. President? I really do not know. Diplomatic front? The ASEAN, perhaps? The new Biden presidency? A direct engagement with the President of the People's Republic of China? I don't know, Mr. President. How I wish we were in those days. Let me end, Mr. President, just to make a light situation out, out of this important legislation coming from a different jurisdiction, to quote John Denver, one of my favorite singers in his song entitled Children of the Universe. And I quote, the silver dolphins twist and dance and sing to one another. The cosmic ocean knows no bounds, for all that lives are brothers. I wish, Mr. President, 
that all those who are engaged in the West Philippine Sea are to be treated and to be considered as brothers. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Jordi Leader. Yeah, Mr. President, uh, I move that the gentleman's speech be referred to the Committee on Foreign Relations, Mr. President. An objection. Hearing none, so referred. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a few housekeeping. Change of referrals before we take up the main topics for the day. Mr. President, with the consent of the body, I move the, to transfer from the Committee on Rules to the Committee on Local Government, Senate Bill Number 1381. Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. Motion is approved. Mr. President. Passing City Day Bill, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I move as well with the consent of the body to transfer from public order and dangerous drugs to the Committee on Justice and Human Rights, Amen. Senate Resolution Number 593. And uh, this is a resolution on crimes committed against just, just lawyers and other officers of the court. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, so transferred. Thank you. The rationale, we have a hearing set already with the Committee on Justice and Human Rights and similar measures. Is Senator Gordon is seeking the floor? Ah, yes, Mr. President, Hello, maybe Mr. recognize Senator Gordon. Go ahead, Senator Gordon. Mr. President, I'm not going to interpolate uh, the gentleman from Cavite. Uh, however, I would like to make a manifestation and perhaps even uh, uh, including the referral of the said uh, speech. Uh, to the National Defense uh, Committee, Mr. President, Defense Committee, Mr. President. Uh, this is something that uh, I think we must not let pass, Mr. President. When another country claims the oceans surrounding us, which we claim, and for that matter, even threatens to demolish our fishing boats or the fishing boats of any country that uh, somehow get into that ocean, Mr. President, or that sea. Or for that matter, demolish structures built on islands that we claim, or they claim, or some other nation claims. This is a serious cause for concern. This is a shot in the bow of all the claimants in the territories uh, that is composed uh, of uh, the claims involving uh, disputed uh, claim, uh, dis uh, claims on disputed territories or islands, and something that we should have done a long time ago, especially when the People's Republic of China started building artificial islands, which is in violation of international law, Mr. President. Uh, and then start claiming it as an island uh, that, uh, that is uh, theirs. Having said that, Mr. President, as we all know, in Pagasa, we have, uh, uh, if, I don't, if I remember correctly, uh, a derelict ship, and we have also built a, some sort of a runway there and some buildings out there, which under this new declaration of the, uh, the legislation of Congress uh, puts our people there, our civilians there, and particularly our armed forces in harm's way. Or for that matter, when they speak of even NGO vessels uh, traversing the area, would be subject to fire uh, by air, by land, by sea, weapons. These are, these are serious matters that I think must be discussed with our military and with our uh, Committee on Foreign Affairs. Now, my good friend, Teddy Boy Loxin, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs I read today, said uh, it is not our business because partly in an effort to try to not involve in a headlong confrontation, but I'm sure he will go on back channeling and ask for an explanation. At the very least, I feel that China should explain what its intentions are, principally because uh, this creates a flashpoint uh, in this area where 60% of the world is at and where a lot of uh, uh, assets in terms of oil, in terms of commerce, pass through every day. So when a Chinese Coast Guard is allowed to take and I quote, all necessary means, including the use of weapons to stop or prevent threats from foreign vessels. How can a banka threaten the Coast Guard of China? A fishing boat, as uh, my good friend from Cavite says, from Zambales or Mindoro, or from uh, other areas like Palawan. Uh, how can they be treated as threats 
uh, of foreign vessels when these are peacefully engaged in the struggle for life and uh, trying to uh, fish the, uh, uh, these oceans. Uh, in other words, here is a gunboat diplomacy where the Coast Guard personnel will now be permitted to board our boats. They are not satisfied with just ramming our boats and then leaving them. And now they are willing to inspect foreign ships. Now, assuming it is not Philippine vessels that they will inspect, but if they start demanding that they inspect other vessels, this, could, this can precipitate tension and could even lead to a shooting war, Mr. President, because Australian vessels, American vessels, English, UK vessels, French vessels, and other countries have passed through these waters, Mr. President. Now, I think, uh, I hope we're not looking at uh, a country that has turned rogue, that has turned uh, to be unilaterally uh, aggressive in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, making sure that uh, they assert their claims in a violent manner, Mr. President. Uh, I consider this uh, a great risk of miscalculation in these vast areas of disputed waters using the same words that they use. Any Coast Guard official of China can miscalculate uh, the powers within his craft and uh, start using that and precipitate a conflict in the area, Mr. President. Now, I understand the foreign minister of China just came by. I would like to know what they discussed with the president or with the foreign minister or the secretary of our country. If our if we are just uh, going to, you know, uh, turn the other cheek or just quietly accept what is. It is a creeping uh, threat that I think can escalate any time, especially with Taiwan, especially with our own claims in these areas, especially with what is happening in Hong Kong, especially with their dispute with the Japanese in the Southern Islands. Mr. President, I think that uh, this deserves, at the very least, an executive session where we can invite our officials determining policy on this island so that the Senate can be guided accordingly and so that proper appropriations can be made by the Senate to at least come up with a credible capability and perhaps even to the point of uh, facilitating, expediting, and speeding up, for example, submarines uh, to be operated by the Philippine Navy or for that matter, uh, uh, maybe even land-based missiles that are mobile uh, so that uh, they cannot easily be destroyed. Now, I'm saying this if only to wake everybody up from the stupor that uh, we're being led to believe. We have a Chinese neighbor who has been kind to us, has been supportive of us, but the other face of it who has threatened us and has even threatened to acquire our own claims that have been there for uh, several years and is now going to threaten a very volatile atmosphere in these areas. Our fisheries have been taken from us. Our people have been deprived of their livelihood. And I think China owes us an explanation as to what its true intentions are, whether they're really a peaceful and friendly neighbor, as I've always thought they were, or they've changed their suit or their code into a coat of armor that can become more aggressive and more dangerous to all kinds of folks traversing that route. That note, Mr. President, I would like to request that uh, the, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the remarks made by this representation as well as that of the uh, gentleman from Cavite not only be given to the Secretary of, uh, to the Foreign Affairs Committee, but also uh, to the Defense Committee, if uh, by your leave you will accept. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and uh, I hope that we can share way clear in solving the problems that are presenting itself slowly but surely in a most threatening manner. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Oh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Risa Antiveros, Mr. President, would like to be recognized. Senator Antiveros, recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, may I please just register my presence in today's session since I was late for the roll call? 
All right. We we'll place that on record. Thank you, Mr. Your President. Leader, what do you say to the <coughs> request of Senator Gordon? <coughs> and before you do that, just to set the record straight as far as my opinion is concerned. Yes, Mr. President. You know, uh, just to include into the records also. In my opinion, Secretary Teddy Boyloxin, when he said that uh, it's not our business, the legislation, he means that China can legislate what they want. Yes, that's right. Perhaps our concern is on the actions thereafter or the effects. Correct. Yes, it is. But as far as what they want to pass in their uh, parliament, it's none of our business. That's what he means. Yes, Mr. President. All right. You're absolutely correct. Okay, thank you. But uh, there's a request from our dear distinguished colleague to include the Committee on National Defense. I move for the secondary referral to the Committee on National Defense, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? Hearing none. Sorry, heard. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, <coughs> finally, just to change referral so that I'm done with the, uh, the these items. I move, Mr. President, with the consent of the body, to move to transfer the committee from the Committee on Banks and Financial Institutions to the Committee on Government, Corporation, Public Enterprises, Senate Bill Number 2003. This is the Guide Act, and the and banks will still be secondary committee, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. So, transferred. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we take up and consider proposed Senate Resolution Number 616. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration of 616 is in order. We request the Secretary to read the title of the measure. Secretary will read the title of the measure. Resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to oppose the unilateral termination of the 1989 University of the Philippines UP Department of National Defense DND Accord and to urge up UP and DND to commence a dialogue and find a common ground that promotes peace, security, and protects academic freedom and the pursuit of excellence. George Leader. May we recognize the sponsor of the measure, the distinguished gentleman from Pampanga and Queso City, Senator uh, Francis Kiko Pangilinan. Gentlemen from Pampanga and Queso City, Senator Francis Pangilinan is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader, distinguished colleagues. Given all the uncertainties and fears uh, brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the anxieties and worries of the rising food prices, this representation would like to welcome the decision of the Department of National Defense through its secretary, Secretary Lorenzana, to hold a dialogue with the University of the Philippines on the termination of the 1989 UPDND Accord. Ayaw na natin ng aalahanin ang taong bayan na mabigat na ang pinapasan araw-araw. Gaya ng ginawa nating mga hearing sa COVID management at vaccine rollout at maging ang nakaschedule na hearing sa darating na lunes tungkol sa mataas na presyo ng pagkain, dialogue at pag-uusap ang pinakamahusay na paraan sa paghahanap ng mga solusyon sa mga problema. Sa usaping ito, ang mga na-raise na issue ay kapayapaan, siguridad, kalayaan at kahusayan. At dahil gusto nating mapalawig o ma-extend ang magagandang provision at bunga ng UPDND Accord sa lahat ng mga educational institutions, we further urge the DND to hold dialogues with other educational institutions and find a common ground that promotes peace and security, protects academic freedom, the pursuit of excellence, and the rule of law. At dahil mas productive mag-dialogue kaysa mag-away, we would also like to urge both parties, UP and the DND, to reconsider the abrogation of the accord. Because after all, the accord is in essence the product of dialogue. Last week, soon after the UP-DND accord was terminated, we filed Senate Resolution 616. The resolution introduced by myself, Senate Minority Leader Frank Brilon, Senators Nancy Binay, Laila De Lima, Risa Ontiveros, Ralph Recto, and Joel Villanueva, and supported by Senator Dick Gordon. Mr. President, a number of developments have taken place since this proposed resolution was filed last week. And as such, this representation believes the resolution as is will need to be amended at the proper time to reflect these important developments. Among them is the public statement, as we earlier uh, mentioned, of Secretary Lorenzana, who has reached out based on news reports to President Danny Concepcion of UP 
as he has agreed to dialogue with the UP community. Another development was the AFP publicly apologizing for the incident wherein the armed forces red tag and erroneously included in a list of alleged and new People's Army recruits some UP alumni, including former public servants. Also last Saturday, January 23, General Antonio Parlade Jr. named 18 schools where the NPA allegedly recruits students. The list includes the country's top universities, including UP, PUP, FEU, Pamantasan ng Lugsod ng Maynila, Ateneo de Manila University, De La Salle University, and the Royal Pontifical University of Santo Tomas, among others. FEU, La Salle, Ateneo, and UST has since issued a joint statement denouncing the uh, statements attributed to General Par Parlade and objecting to the accusations. The joint statement was signed by Dr. Michael Alba, President of FEU, Brother Raymond Suplido, uh, President of De La Salle, Father Isaias de Tronco, OP, Vice Rector of the University of Santo Tomas, and Father Robert C. Yap, President Ateneo de Manila University. Kailangan na talagang mag-usap, lumalaki ang gulo. Tingin ko maaayos ang mga gusot sa isang malaya at bukas na usapan o dialogue. Pwede kasama sa dialogue ang sinasabing hotbed di umano, ng mga rebelde na mga pamantasan. Totoo ba ito? Kung totoo, may iwasan ba ito sa pag-terminate ng sinasabing accord? Ano ang mga iba pang paraan para hindi mag-armas ang mga estudyante? Ano ang dahilan ng pag-aaplas? What are the root causes of insurgency among others? Gusto ko lang sagutin ang tanong sa kung special ba ang UP. Naging aktivista kasi po ako noon. I would say that uh, that has been a defining moment of my life. I would have been perhaps a corporate lawyer or a literature professor or even living abroad had I not become an activist. Activism was my love language for our country and for our people. Activism also brought me here now to the halls of the Senate, serving our country serving our people. Dito sa Senado, iba-iba tayo ng pinanggalingan. Pero sa huli, gusto lang natin maglingkod sa bayan, sa sambayan ng Pilipino. And academic freedom, which includes the freedom to think, speak, move, and even dissent critically, is a freedom that everyone is entitled to. A freedom that UP allowed its students, activists or not. And a freedom that everyone must enjoy. We hope this resolution will inspire an open and transparent as well as participatory and inclusive dialogue among all parties. At the proper time, Mr. President, we shall propose to amend the title of this resolution to read as follows. Resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to welcome the Department of National Defense decision to answer the various calls for dialogue with the University of the Philippines, on the termination of the 1989 UPDND Accord to urge both parties to reconsider the abrogation of the Accord and to further urge the DND to hold dialogues with other academic institutions to find a common ground that promotes the rule of law, peace and security, and protects academic freedom and the pursuit of excellence. With this proposed amendment that we will introduce at the proper time, it is hoped that the Senate adopt proposed Senate Resolution 616. Magandang hapon at maraming salamat. Thank you, Thank you. Senator Pangilinan. Sounds good. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll for... Just uh, take a look at the whereases and then yes. perhaps uh, we can have the... With the permission of Senator Kiko, uh, I, we're getting a consensus here as long as we are able to uh, make a few amendments, Mr. President. Looks like we can get the support of the majority of our members here, including those physically present. May I just request for a five-minute suspension, Mr. President, so that we can study. I'll call up Senator uh, Kiko on the phone, and then because uh, he gave the amendment to the title, and seems like the title is is all right, the amended title. Yes, yes. We'll just take a look at the whereas clauses, and then uh, Mr. President, so we can take it, it back on the so phone. that it jibes with the yes. uh, the, the title. Yes, Mr. President. Right. Maybe, right. maybe just recognize Senator Kiko one last yes, time, very quickly. Uh, one more time, and Senator P after. Yes, very quickly. Uh, yes, very quickly, Mr. President, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, with that uh, proposed amendment to the title, of course, 
subject to style, all other whereas should uh, be consistent with the title. And we will discuss correct, the matter correct. with uh, Senator Zubiri. Maraming salamat, Mr. President. Correct, correct. Uh, Senator Gaetano. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would just like to express my support. Um, Senator Kiko's staff coordinated with my staff because I was in a meeting with the DOF at the time he circulated the resolution. So I did not see it until after it was filed. And when his staff uh, inquired, I said I would support. So I just want to put that on record, Mr. President. And uh, in addition, uh, Mr. President, I'd also just like to uh, put on record um, a few statements that I made soon after that statement uh, coming from DND was released. Um, I was quite surprised, Mr. President, about the manner that it was handled. It was basically a unilateral abrogation of this long-standing agreement. And definitely we welcome that uh, a few days after that, uh, Defense Secretary Lorenzana um, expressed openness to negotiate uh, with the UP leadership. So that is a definitely a welcome approach, but I would have really wanted to see it that way because we are mature and responsible people here. Uh, UP is the premier institution. DNB is, is at the forefront of the defense of our country. I think it, it honestly was a given that uh, any concerns that there would be would be discussed among civilized and responsible um, leaders of these of this, uh, communities or these agencies. And so as I welcome this step forward, I do hope that uh, we don't have to go through this because it sends the wrong signal that uh, we cannot even um, appreciate what uh, was done in the past. Um, I, I, I read the, uh, the um, uh, statement of um, President Abueva and uh, how he and uh, um, former President uh, um, Ramos uh, had a mutual respect for each other, and so it made it easy for them to come to this agreement. That, that is what we need at this time, Mr. President, and not unilateral actions, which may be based on facts, uh, on, on um, information that is perceived as facts by one side, but not necessarily facts on the other side. And so more and more with, with the kind of um, um, speed of lightning information that the uh, process our our cell phones, our laptops, um, the more we should verify this information before we make these kind of decisions, Mr. President. I'm a proud graduate of UP, as so many of my other colleagues are here. And in the same way that Senator Tico said that, um, you know, he it has molded him, it has molded me. I was never an activist. Uh, I was more of a volleyball player, as Senator Tico also was, but uh, he was also an activist. I was just a volleyball player um, and uh, very uh, trying to get good grades. Um, my brother, um, now uh, Congressman Alan Cayetano, was an activist. So, iba-iba ang uh, nagiging ano, natin, experience, iba-iba din ang nagiging uh, outcome ng tumal experiences natin. But the three people I mentioned, myself, Senator Kiko, uh, my brother, and of course, I'm looking at Senator Drilon, one of my mentors for the longest time, Senator Gordon. We, we come out um, in, a, in many ways um, molded, inspired, um, touched by our experiences in UP. And, and it is, a, it is a, an insult, actually, to suddenly say that, you know, this upbringing we had uh, is useless and uh, ang patutunguhan lang dun is um, uh, the left-leaning the left side, which, is, which has chosen um, violence. Medyo, that's, that's too much of an extreme conclusion, Mr. President. And so, um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. But um, again, I'd like to uh, express my, 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 my relief that the uh, Defense Secretary is going to meet with, uh, with UP. And I ask both parties to come in with an open mind. Come in assuming that you have a child studying there. One of the little efforts that I've done, and I know it's a very small effort, is I brought the UP women's football team to PMA twice so that there would be a light and fun exchange and uh, getting to know you uh, among these uh, students of UP and uh, the student the cadets of PMA since it was done in, in, um, uh, in the spirit of sportsmanship. Um, I think I think it was the step in the right direction. And sana, yan din ang ipakita natin uh, tayo mga um, leaders no, of, of these various institutions at the highest level um, so that we can really move in the right direction in the spirit of um, 
friendship, in the spirit of finding solutions and not just um, making it making making a conclusion that my way is better than your way. So thank you, Mr. President. And uh, right, um, as can, the majority uh, leader wanted, the session is suspended. Mr. President.
Thank you, Mr. President. We have a proposed draft resolution uh, to amend the proposed resolution number 616. Um, and uh, we uh, are sending, a, have we sent a copy to Senator Kiko? Uh, the author, Dave? Yeah, we sent uh, the chief of staff of Senator Pangilinan, hopefully for him to be able to receive it as well. There's just a further amendment with the permission of Senator Pangilinan. On the title, the request of uh, our colleagues here is that on the word, um, reconsider the abrogation of the accord, there is a request to amend it further to revisit the accord rather, to replace it with the word words, revisit the accord. We'd like to seek the permission of our dear colleague if he's okay with the proposed amendment. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, it was, yes, Mr. Senate President, Majority Leader, uh, earlier before we resumed, uh, we already manifest or we shared uh, informally our uh, uh, acceptance of that uh, proposed amendment to the Thank you very proposed much. amendment. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Thank you. Just but, for the record, yes, so sir. that uh, everything is in order. The reason we suggested that is because uh, the word revisit sounds neutral, but it really, it, the real meaning is to consider and take up again. Yes. yes. But it does yes. not, uh, you know, it, it does not offend any other uh, uh, thinking on the matter. Correct, right? Mr. President. Thank you. May, maybe I could read the full title, Mr. President, for the record. Yes. So the resolution will read, resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to welcome the Department of National Defense DN, or the DND's decision to answer the various calls for dialogue with the University of the Philippines on the termination of the 1989 UPDND Accord, to urge both parties to revisit the accord, comma, and to further urge the DND to hold dialogues with other academic institutions and find a common ground that promotes peace and security and protects academic freedom and the pursuit of excellence, Mr. President. That will be the title of the measure. And uh, the the uh, the text and the uh, uh, content of the resolution has been forwarded to the sponsor because yes, uh, we are now have less two less whereas yes yes okay uh, Senator Panglinan yes Mr President just a a slight addition uh, to the title it should also promote the rule of law and then peace and security Mr President. Uh, we, we'd like to have Security, the rule of law. Freedom, rule of law, and the pursuit of... Ano? Ano to? Promotes rule academic of law, peace and security, and protects academic freedom and pursuit of excellence. Is that correct? Yes. Find the common ground that promotes that promotes Both the rule of law, rule of law, peace and security, and protects academic freedom, etc., etc. Yes. Is yes, that Mr. how it is? What does yes, the majority leader say? Mr. President, I agree with the good gentleman. All right. Rule of law should always be... A top priority, anyway, Mr. President. So, may uh, the majority leader read now the, yes. the title of the resolution? The amended title of the resolution will read The resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to welcome the Department of National Defense decision to answer the various calls for dialogue with the University of the Philippines on the termination of the 1989 UP DND Accord and to urge both parties to revisit the accord and to further urge the DND to hold dialogues with other academic institutions and find a common ground that promotes the rule of law, peace and security, and protects academic freedom and the pursuit of excellence, subject to style. All right. What does the sponsor say? Um, we agree. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? Anything not adopted? With that, Mr. President, Mr. President. Uh, I may we recognize Senator Risa Ontiveros, Mr. President. Senator Diveros uh, recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, maikling manifestasyon lang po, Mr. President, galing sa kabilang dako ng katipunan. Ako po, kagaya ni Senator Kiko, ay naging student activist din. Ang aktivismo ay bahagi na rin ng aking DNA. But I stand here today not just as an activist, not just as a citizen, but also as a mother. Walang magulang ang gusto na mamundok ang anak o sumama sa mga naniniwala sa armas at dahas. Kaya sa isang banda, nauunawaan ko din ang mga magulang na nag-aalala sa recruitment ng kanilang anak sa dulong kaliwa. Ngunit, ngunit Mr. President, sa kabilang banda, bilang nanay, gusto ko rin ang lipunan na naniniwala sa malayang pamamahayag, sa pagmamahal sa sambayanan, 
sa pagiging kritikal at mapaningil kahit ng mga kabataan. I dream of a society where our youth's idealism is allowed to shine bright, not diminished by the fears of the jaded. Finally, like Senator Kiko and Senator Pia, I support dialogue and conversation between the DND and the university and all universities. In our shared love for our country's youth, we might yet find a common ground to move forward. Salamat po, Mr. President. All right, thank you. Uh, just for the record, the amendment that was proposed by the uh, majority leader and accepted by the sponsor, that is subject to style. That's uh, correct, Mr. President. So that but, is uh, therefore included in the resolutory portion. Yes, Mr. President. For That's the correct. record. That's the resolutory for portion that will be taken that in the on the bottom end of the resolution. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, well, with that, Mr. President, uh, there are some members who would like to express their wish to explain their vote. Let us adopt first the resolution, Mr. President. After we adopt, we can uh, recognize our colleagues to stand up uh, for the explanations. Correct. So, that, is the correct yes. uh, that is the correct procedure. Yes, yes, Senator yes. Senator yes, Pangilinan, yes. after which Senator Gordon, Mr. President. Like Just a very quick manifestation. Uh, Senator Gordon has requested that he be uh, a co-author of the measure, Mr. President. Yes, and myself as well, with the permission of Senator Pangilinan. Yes, if yes. I can be made the co-author of this measure as well. Senator Grace, Senator Gordon, Senator... Angara. Angara, uh, Senator um, Ralph Recto, um, of I course, the Senate, uh, Minority Floor Leader, I'm sure, would like to be also an, as an author of the measure, Senator... Uh, the others are already co-authors, I believe. Yes, that is correct. Mr. President. Yes. Just a slight correction on the manifestation of my uh, our colleague, Senator Pangilinan. Initially, I was asked to co-author, and I said yes. Apparently, uh, the message did not come on time. So I was wondering why my name was not there. So I did not have to request. Originally, I was in support of this resolution. Just want to put that on record. Right. Yes, we confirm that. It's now placed on record. Uh, the, it was, uh, if it was omitted before, it's, uh, it should be placed there now. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. President. With that, I move to adopt Senate Resolution Number 616, the amended version subject to stand, Mr. President. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. Resolution 616. The sense of the Senate on the UPDND Accord is hereby adopted. May we recognize a few of our colleagues that are in the plenary, Mr. President. We have Senator Joel Villanueva, as well as uh, Senator De La Rosa would like to also be recognized afterwards. Senator Joel Villanueva is recognized, and then uh, Senator De La Rosa. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Majority Floor Leader. This is just a short manifestation of uh, support and uh, in, in agreement with uh, a lot of statements made by our uh, dear colleagues here in this August chamber. And uh, just to put on record, Mr. President, that I have always believed that uh, there are more things that unite the soldiers of uh, the Republic and the scholars of the people than the divide them. And if there is a need for a 2.0 version of the agreement, eh, gawin po natin at yan yung ninanais natin. Umupo ulit at magkaroon ng dialogue. And again, kung kinakailangan i-press yung reset button o magkaroon ng 2.0 version agreement, eh, supportahan po natin. We believe, Mr. President, that UP or uh, uh, any university is a public space or a civic area where the free exchange of ideas, even the clash of uh, ideas, should be nourished. And so we support, again, this uh, resolution and we thank our dear colleagues, especially uh, the principal author, Senator Kiko Pangilinan. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Senator De La Rosa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I just would like to manifest my uh, abstention from the adoption of this uh, resolution. Mr. President, please allow me to state for the record my support for the abrogation of the 1989 agreement between the University of the Philippines and the Department of National Defense. Such move is intended to protect the youth from the snares of communism and its empty promises. 
Ginoong Pangulo, ang kapulisan at ang militar ay isa sa layunin na putiktahan ng ating kabataan. Hindi kailanman ninanais ng kapulisan at militar na maghasik ng kaguluhan at takot sa loob ng paralan. It is a sad reality that the CPP-NPA took undue advantage of the 1989 agreement between UP and DND. With this protective mantle, this leftist group randomly recruited young and brilliant students from this premier university to be members of their organization and serve as its juvenile frontliners in fighting the government. <clears throat> Sa loob ng 31 taon, 31 years, na pakinabangan ng lubos ng mga CPP-NPA ang 1989 agreement na ito na naghantong sa paghikayat ng maraming estudyanteng maging membro ng Armadong Komunista. Ang nakalulungkot, marami sa mga estudyante ng UP ay napatay sa iba't ibang inkwentro sa kabundukan. Sa kagustuhan nilang ipaglaban ang baloktot na paniniwala at pilosopiya ng komunismo. I have known UP as a fertile ground that cultivates free thinking. It encourages ideas coming from the left, right, or center. It welcomes wide range of discourses that redound to the welfare of the youth. I am quite puzzled now why they are resisting ideologies from the right and center of the political spectrum. <clears throat> For the record, I am not anti-UP. I am anti-CPP, NPA, NDF. I respect UP as a breeding ground for the best and brightest mind that this country has produced. I admire UP for producing the likes of former President Ferdinand Marcos, <clears throat> Jose P. Laurel, Manuel Rojas, Elpidio Quirino, Justado Macapagal, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, and even including CPP founder Juma Sison. Huwag na po tayong lumayo dito sa Senado. Karamihan sa ating mga magagaling na kasamahan ay galing sa UP. Sina Senator Pangilinan, Binay, Angara, Po, Gordon, Pimentel, Cayetano, Villar, ang ating majority floor leader, and may kababayan, Senator Meg Soberi, our Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Recto, at ang dating Justice and Labor Secretary, now Minority Leader, Senator Franklin Delon, na kung saan marami akong natutunan sa paggawa ng batas dahil sa kanyang kagalingan. My decision for not supporting the proposed resolution should not be interpreted that I am against UP. My vote and this manifestation are a testament of my lifelong battle against the ideologies of CPP and PA. I cannot think of any benefits for our country for their existence. Many police officers and military personnel have been killed in the hands of this communist terrorist group. Also, they have been one of the reasons why we have not yet achieved the full economic growth for the country. Ang presensya ng polis o militar kung kailangan sa loob ng campus ay hindi para kitilin ang academic freedom sa pamantasan ng Pilipinas. Ang malayang pagpapahayag ng saloobin at isipan ng ating mga estudyante ay patuloy na binibigyang halaga at nirerespeto ng lahat ng ahinsya ng gobyerno. Ngunit, kailangan ding bantayan na hindi mapasok na mga taong may makakaliwang pilosopiya ang naturang paaralan para di na makapaghikayat pa ng kabataan na maliligaw ng landas tungo sa komunismo. As we have mentioned in our committee report number 10 that reported out our resolution to investigate the missing minors who are allegedly recruited by leftist groups. The right of the student sector to voice out their sentiments, opinions, and beliefs, and to participate in legitimate organizations are well within the constitutional boundaries. It is in fact guaranteed by the highest law of the land 
which encourage the youth involvement in public and civic affairs. There is a need, however, to scrutinize the activities of the youth, especially the student sector, be it inside or outside the campus, so as to ensure their security, safety, and well-being. With the encouraging presence of the police and the military in UP, these young scholars may also be encouraged to serve their country as members of the armed forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, and other law enforcement agencies. Lalong lalo na ngayon, doon sa balita na pinahayag ng ating uh, kulig na, na si Senator Tolentino about the threat coming from China. Hindi lamang sa UP, kundi sa lahat ng paralan sa ating bansa. With this in mind, I guarantee that your police force and military are at your service to protect and defend our young people from the abyss of communism and its deceptive ideology. Maraming salamat, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Senator De Rosa. I am tempted to interpolate you, but uh, it's the ex explanation of your vote, so I will not. <laughs> I'll say I'll reserve it for another day. Mr. It President, your, it could serve your school. Sir. Anyway, <laughs> Senator Coco Pimentel is recognized. Just a very short manifestation, uh, sir, and dear colleagues. That, uh, I join uh, the uh, sentiment expressed in the amended uh, resolution and uh, now call on the uh, DND, the cabinet, the administration, and uh, the whole society to, uh, instead of focusing on the where the CPP NPA does the recruitment, we should focus on the why they are able to uh, attract some of our idealistic young uh, Filipinos into their ideology. Maybe, sorry, maybe there's too much uh, inequality, too much injustice in our society, which leads to frustration and even uh, desperation among our idealistic uh, young Filipinos. So we better uh, study and ask the more difficult question of why the ideology, which has not proven itself to be successful in any country in the world, is still attractive to some of our idealistic uh, citizens. Thank you very much, Mr. President. All right, uh, Majority Leader. Yes, I, I, I also agree with the position of uh, Senator Coco on that, Mr. President. Until we can solve many problems, uh, poverty is one of them, we'll have a difficult time really trying to rid the, this ideology purely by, by uh, show of force or force alone, Mr. President. And so we have to look deeper into these issues. And... Uh, Hindi naman po, tama naman po sinabi ni Senator Bato, hindi naman po lahat na nasa UP nagiging komunista. Ako bilang estudyante sa UP Los Baños, meron din po tayong mga kaibigan na nasa kaliwa. Hindi naman po ako sumama sa kanila. At tuloy-tuloy uh, po ang aking naging uh, hanay no? sa uh, larangan ng public service at politika at nandito na po ako na sa Senado, which I was well-trained under the, uh, of course, the UP system uh, to fight for advocacies that we feel feel for and we fight for and we, we believe in, Mr. President. So, is the, is the University of the Philippines only the only uh, university with a, an accord with the DND? Uh, what I read in the newspapers and the TV reports, meron din po daw ang PUP. PUP? PUP, yes, Mr. President. Wala sa letra, no? <laughs> Mababait daw yung mga taga-letran, Mr. President. <laughs> ha? Hindi, puro writings ng mga taga-letran. <laughs> Matitigas sa ulo. Yes. All right. So, uh, thank you, Mr. President. We thank our colleagues for, for their time and for this uh, uh, important uh, piece of resolution. All right. And, and that may proceed now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, uh, moving on, we'll move to the next agenda, uh, next topic. I move, Mr. President, that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 
1886, an equally important measure, Mr. President, on the municipal trial courts. Any objection? Any non considerations in order? Mr. President, uh, is our dear colleague Senator Gordon uh, online? Senator Richard Gordon is recognized. Yes, recognize the, the, we are in the period of interpolation, Mr. President. I just wanted to move the close, move to close the period of interpolation as there are no longer uh, any colleagues who listed to interpolate the measure. Right. So any objection? Hearing none, period of interpolation is closed. Mr. President, I move to open the period of amendments and recognize our dear colleague from Sambales, Senator Richard Gordon. Senator Richard Gordon is recognized for the period of amendments. Uh, if there are no amendments from the floor, I'd like to uh, submit uh, uh, committee amendments, if I may, uh, in, in answer to all the uh, proposals made during the interpolation, particularly uh, from Senator Delon and from Senator Pimentel. Uh, I would just like to say uh, that we took the matter up, the concerns of Senator Delon with the Supreme Court. So. Uh, uh, the delegation to the Supreme Court has been accepted by them, and uh, I may now propose the amendments on page 4, delete lines 14 to 18, and replace section 3 with a new section 3, which shall read as follows. <laughs> there are no amendments on page 1, 2, and 3. No, none. 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 All right, page 4, go ahead. Uh, Section 3, uh, Congress hereby delegates to the Supreme Court the power to further increase or decrease the jurisdictional thresholds of the first and second level courts in line with the Supreme Court's power of administrative supervision over all courts under Section 6, Article 8 of the Philippine Constitution. Uh, so propose your... Is that, is that the... Is that... Will that become the new Section 3? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, the Senator Drillon is recognized. Uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, with uh, uh, all due respect to the good sponsor, may I propose an amendment along the same line and for the consideration of the good sponsor and the body? Uh, uh, the proposed amendment will be as follows. As, uh, authority of the Supreme Court to adjust the jurisdictional amounts for the first and second level courts. Period. Five years from the effectivity of this act, comma, the Supreme Court may adjust the jurisdictional amounts for the first and second level courts to reflect the extraordinary supervening events or deflation of the currency or change in the land valuation or to maintain the proportion of the caseload between the first and second level courts. We have, Mr. President, that is our proposed amendment. So, Mr. Sponsor, if you may accept and uh, allow us to explain uh, for the record, uh, the, uh, the uh, proposal uh, would, own, would um, highlight uh, amendment of the jurisdictional amounts uh, uh, and um, only under a certain circumstances so that the delegation is limited uh, to be ex uh, the, the power to redefine the jurisdiction uh, is limited to those uh, to the occurrence of the circumstances we have enumerated in the proposed amendment. Uh, we are submitting this for the consideration of the good sponsor uh, if he finds it uh, in order. What does the sponsor say? Willingly, Your Honor. Uh, uh, we consulted the Supreme Court, and I think the essence, uh, with more specificity, uh, uh, is uh, accepted, Your Honor. 
uh, the right, delegation so of power keeps it uh, uh, from uh, uh, from uh, you know lines uh, that uh, prevent it from overflowing into something else, Mr. President. If I remember my uh, proceedings in courts, Mr. President. So this so will replace the this will replace the proposal that you mentioned earlier and then yes, uh, it will be placed as section three yes sir all right any objection mr president senator Pimentel is recognized thank you uh i believe uh, this is a radical departure from uh, existing law uh am i am i correct uh, mr sponsor that uh existing law since time and uh, practice since time immemorial has uh, of, uh, has recognized the power of the legislature to fix the jurisdiction of courts. So will this uh, proposed amendment now radically change the rule? Uh, <coughs> although there are canals, uh, uh, but still it will be the Supreme Court now which will determine whether to uh, the trigger uh, has been uh, activated, which the legislature can also do, uh, Mr. President. What? what uh, Senator Rilon, the minority leader. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I, the, uh, firstly, uh, the uh, power of Congress to define the jurisdiction of the courts, except the Supreme Court, is constitutional. Uh, however, also recognized in our jurisdiction, is the authority and the power of Congress to delegate that that uh, that power to legis that uh, legislative power on certain specific standards, so that what is delegated uh, would not be the uh, enactment of the law, but uh, the uh, execution of uh, a principle of a policy based on certain defined standards. Yes, I agree with Senator Coco Pimentel that this is a radical departure from what we know. That is why I was prepared to discuss this as a separate uh, bill, uh, Mr. Sponsor. But and, and because I know that uh, this is something that uh, uh, is a departure from the uh, traditional practice, and in fact, uh, uh, the power defined. Uh, uh, power of Congress defined in our Constitution. Uh, however, uh, if the uh, Supreme Court says it is feasible and can be done, we cannot be more focused than the Pope. If the interpreters of the law says it can be delegated, uh, and I believe really it's a good policy uh, to do this, uh, and uh, we, 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 in case the future Congresses would change its mind, and this is for the record, if any future Congress would want to take back this, uh, this uh, delegation of power, there is nothing that would prevent the future Congresses from uh, so doing. And uh, just to highlight that point, uh, maybe we can insert somewhere in the amendments uh, that uh, and the phrase, unless otherwise provided by law, in order to preserve that right of Congress to define jurisdiction. Uh, just, just to ad address the need of, or the, the, the concern of Senator Coco, which I, I, I agree with. Yeah. Mr. President, can I, may I uh, react, then, Mr. President? Uh, yes, go ahead, Senator I, I, have, I have noticed that the proposed amendment actually studied and considered uh, the valid uh, requirements for uh, the requirements for a valid delegation of legislative power uh, well uh, you, we made some informal uh, consultation with the supreme court but of course that can still be questioned in a formal case before the supreme court and uh, formal ruling can overrule the informal uh, opinion expressed in a consultation so as, as uh, correctly pointed out by the minority leader, this is a policy. Okay, he has reduced this to a policy question because he has, he has really studied the uh, proposed amendment to be constitutionally valid. So it is my position that as a matter of policy, the legislature should retain 
the power to define the uh, jurisdiction of courts and just trust trust the future legislatures that they will also be responsive to changes on the ground just as we have in the in the proposed amendment uh, there are uh, Indicators there, although I have not memorized them, but I've heard them like uh, valuation of land, etc., uh, where the Supreme Court will be expected to be responsive and then trigger, trigger, uh, trigger that uh, that event and then exercise the power. So that can be that that the same power, the same standards can be observed by a responsive legislature. Uh, who are elected by the people, so uh, we are putting additional burden on our electorate to uh, elect responsible uh, and diligent uh, legislators, uh, Mr. President. So, so uh, if we if we will say that this has become a policy question, I I stand on the other side of the uh, of the fence, Mr. President, uh, and I will reiterate my position that. I would rather that the legislature retain the power to define the uh, the jurisdiction of our courts, and then uh, trust that future legisl legislatures will be responsive enough to do this. Can I have a one minute suspension, uh, Mr. President, with the permission of the good sponsor, Senator Gordon and Senator Pimentel? Uh, the session is suspended.
Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, once again, Mr. President, may we recognize Senator uh, Richard Gordon uh, to propose a few amendments, uh, Mr. President. Yes, uh, Senator Gordon, you, you have the floor. In the interest of dispatch so that uh, we can just handle the other proposal uh, on delegation of matter it can be discussed on Monday, uh, we'd like to finish off uh, the only amendment left, Mr. President, so that when we go, it will just be the only issue on Monday, if we approve this. In page Wait. 4, delete lines 19 to 23, and in page 5, delete lines 1 to 4, and replace section 4 with a new section. Wait, wait. Uh, Senator Gordon, before you continue, we have to withdraw the pending, uh, the pending motion, and that is the amendment proposed by Senator Drillon. Uh, the Senate President is correct. Uh, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, uh, with the permission of the sponsor, we move to withdraw the uh, that particular amendment, Mr. President. Section 3. Yes, I think they're taking that up on Monday uh, again. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, the, uh, hearing no objection, uh, so um, so withdrawn. Senator Gordon now is recognized. Go ahead with your amendment. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for the correction. In page 4, delete lines 19 to 23, and in page 5, delete lines 1 to 4, and replace section 4 with the new section 4, which shall read as follows. Uh, section 4, the provisions of this act shall apply prospectively, which is the uh, proposal of Senator Coco, to all civil cases filed in the second level courts and first level courts from the date of its effect effectivity thereof. Uh, we so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. So thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, so on Monday, the only one, the only thing that we will have to reckon with would be the proposal uh, to uh, do this. And uh, hopefully we can settle that. And if we gotta settle that, I hope the uh, committee will be allowed to call additional uh, witnesses, if you like, uh, for an, another extra hearing, if that is, if we have to go through that. I'm willing to do that all over again. All right. All right. Uh, thank you. Then uh, we will uh, await that proposal for Section 3. In the meantime, thank Majority you. Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before we suspend consideration of the measure, may we request a good sponsor, Senator Gordon, if I could be made a co-author together with Senator Villanueva and uh, Senator Gachalian. Mr. Pleasure, Mr. President, President uh, we welcome all uh, 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 our colleagues who want to be co-authors of uh, this resolution, uh, this is a proposal or bill, which is uh, so very urgent, Mr. President. And maybe also yes. Senator Binay, I could see her also uh, giving the thumbs up. Senator Binay as well, Mr. President. Yes. What about Senator Marcos? Are you, uh, Senator Aimee as well, of course. <laughs> she's uh, she's I, uh, a fighter for local government uh, to devolution, uh, devolve uh, yes, uh, sure. local government. Yes. So. This would be so, better for them. Accepted. The municipal trial courts in Locos Norte and the North. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. President. With that, we will take this back up on Monday and move to suspend consideration of the measure. Any objection? Hearing that consideration is suspended. Uh, Mr. President, Senator Pia Caetano also wishes to co-author PS Resolution Number Six One Six, which you approved earlier. Uh, may we also put that on record, Mr. President? All right, they place that on record. Um, there is a last reference of business, Mr. President. Yes, there is a third additional reference of business. I so move, Mr. President, uh, with the permission. The Secretary will proceed. Third additional reference of business bills on first reading, Senate number 2020, an act establishing the Department of Culture, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Cayetano. To the committees on basic education and uh, civil service and finance. Senate number 2021, an act providing enhanced protection, security, and benefits for media workers, introduced by Senator Revilla Jr. With the Committee on Labor and uh, Public Information. Senate number 2022, an act establishing the government vaccine indemnification program, providing funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate number 2024, an act institutionalizing the grant of emergency use authorization, further amending Republic Act number 3720, otherwise known as the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, as amended by Republic Act number 9711, otherwise known as the Food and Drug Administration FDA Act of 2009, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Health. Resolutions, PS Resolution number 624, Resolution Congratulating and Commending the Outstanding Young Men of the Philippines Awardees for 2020, introduced by Senator Recto. To the Committee on Rules. 
PS Resolution Number 625, Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the alarming reports of significant and steady increase in the volume, volume of importation of frozen fish in spite of our vast aquatic resources as an archipelagic country and with the end in view of introducing measures that will maximize the potential of the local production of fish in order to improve the lives and livelihood of our fisher folks and to attain food security introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Agriculture. Committee reports, Committee Report number 164, prepared and submitted jointly by the Committees on Health and Demography, Public Works and Finance on Senate number 2023, with Senators Cayetano, Go, and Villar's authors thereof, entitled An Act Requiring the Establishment of Quarantine Facilities in Every Region in the Country, Providing Funds Therefore and for Other Purposes, Recommending Its Approval in Substitution of Senate Numbers 1442 and 1529, Sponsor Senator Go. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 165 submitted jointly by the Committees on Health and Demography and Finance on House number 6731, introduced by Representative Gasataya, entitled An Act Establishing a General Hospital in the City of Bacolod, Province of Negros Occidental, to be known as the Bacolod City General Hospital and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval with amendments taking into consideration Senate number 1647, sponsored Senator Go. To the calendar for ordinary business. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with that, uh, no other agenda online on deck, Mr. President. Just a reminder to well, Senator Gordon, Ms. Offline, uh, we, we will take up uh, the Judiciary Marshals tomorrow. We'll put it under our agenda. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, January 27, 2021. Any objection? There being none, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, January 27, 2021. Thank you. Uh.